Hey guys, how's it going? Thank you so much for that amazing intro, Taco. Really appreciate it. Didn't think we'd be talking about music this morning, but uh, always happy to. So, um, yeah, my story is uh, is is a little bit interesting. So I've been a front end developer for uh, over 10 years, uh, working with different systems. Obviously, I've done some Drupal work. Um, and uh, I enjoy the, the theming side of things. So the front end is something that I really like to do. Um, so I started working with uh, WordPress and really focusing on WordPress development about two years ago. And at first, I looked at uh, a basic default theme. So 2015, just tried to, to see how that works. Then I tried to install some other themes that I downloaded from the, the theme repository. Um, tried to change some options and things like that. And I got a good idea of what you could do with WordPress, but I didn't really have a full feeling for, for what, what the possibilities are and the best ways to start as a developer and the best way to build out a custom theme. So this is, uh, this is about one year uh, uh, after my first WordCamp. I was at uh, WordCamp EU in Seville last year. That was my first one. And uh, just amazing to, to be here talking to you guys today uh, about theming. How many people here are developers who have, who have worked with uh, themes before? OK. And what about site builders, people who are, are, are just uh, using WordPress and designing visually? Bloggers? OK. Very cool. Good, good blend. So all right, I'm going to talk about the anatomy of a theme. So what, what makes a, a, a theme uh, function, the, the core files? Uh, and then talk about three different approaches to starting your theme. So starter theme, child themes, and theme frameworks. Uh, what is a theme? A theme is simply a collection of files that help your site to, to take on a new design. So modify the way that WordPress looks and, and, uh, and what it does when you click on things. One of the most important aspects of the theme is your style sheet. A style sheet is, uh, is telling your site how to position things, how to show text, how to show colors, backgrounds, margins, padding. But the style sheet in, in WordPress actually does uh, a, a different function as well. So there are some comments that are really important to the way that WordPress sees your theme. And we'll take a look at some of that meta info and, and how it actually displays in WordPress. Templates are important because they control what is displayed. So let's say you have a sidebar, you have a header. Uh, it, it controls where things are and, uh, and how, how things are, are actually uh, printed out to the page. The uh, templates use HTML and PHP, so you would need to have a, a basic knowledge of PHP, but it's not overly complex. There's an optional file that you can use in your, uh, in your, your theme called functions. Uh, functions.php. In your functions, th this is where you would set things up to, to do anything that's custom based around your theme. So uh, here you would enqueue styles, you would load any scripts, uh, and, and you'd also so make it uh, uh, so that, that if you had custom functions, uh, you would put them in, in one place here in, in your functions file. You do need a, a good under understanding of uh, WordPress coding standards, so you'd want to, to understand how to work with WordPress, um, and, and it is purely in PHP. This is what it looks like. So I've created a very simple theme. So I've got uh, a functions file. I've got an index, which is my template, and uh, a style.css file. In style.css, you can see there's a comment block at the top. So I've taken out the, the comment block just to show you the, the basic details that, that WordPress needs uh, to display your theme. Uh, so I've got a name. I've got my, my name, uh, the username, description, version, and some tags. And this is important because this is, this is what it would look like to take that information and display it in WordPress. So this is the, the theme information screen. And it's a modal that pops up as you're, you're going through the, the different theme options. So templates control display logic. They are, are positioning the, the structure. So anything on your page um, that, that needs to be uh, um, uh, displayed that, that's dynamic is, is controlled by the template. Um, so templates are, you're essentially using PHP to generate the HTML of your page. Um, you can use a template for creating post types for uh, pages, 
custom post, post types and anything that, that WordPress will, will do that you can theme. Um, partials can be included, meaning that you can use smaller pieces of code like a header and footer and, and use those uh, in one file rather than in, and, uh, having them in all of your template files. The functions PHP file acts like a plugin. So it's, it's loaded when WordPress initializes the theme. And it, it, it's essentially where you set up all the functionality um, of, of your site. So you've got scripts, uh, styles that are loaded, uh, any theme features that are being used, like uh, menus, sidebars, post formats. Um, and this is a, place, uh, a central place to define functions that are used by many templates. Um, and it's, it's, also, it's, it's mainly to customize your theme's behavior. One of the approaches that you could take when starting your site build is to use a starter theme. Uh, a starter theme is a foundation for you to start building on. Uh, it's an existing code base that will give you some, some basic uh, code, keep things organized, and, um, and, and set you off to develop a, a good site. So sometimes they are minimal, and sometimes they have a lot of different features um, that, that you'd want to use. Um, but mainly, you're able to uh, leverage the existing code and, and build upon it. You're, you're working directly in the, the file, the starter theme file. Um, so um, it's something that you would use once. And then if you wanted to create another, uh, another site with the same starter theme, you would start again from the, the base of the starter theme. Good to use as your first theme, since it gives you some good best practices and good code uh, that, that you can work from. And uh, it, it's potentially a good choice if you're looking at a starter theme that has some functionality that you'd want to use. So for example, maybe a custom post types being included in a starter theme would be really helpful if you're using custom post types, uh, potentially using SAS or a grid system or using uh, something like a, a front-end framework, and that could be included in, in your starter theme. So you, you choose what, what works for you. Best practice of uh, using a starter theme is not to update it. You're working directly on those theme files, so any, any updates, if you uh, uh, up the, the version to the latest version, you'll lose all your changes. Another approach to theming is to use child themes. And child themes are, are interesting. They, they solve a different problem than a starter theme. Um, you're essentially using a parent theme and extending it. So you're taking something that exists, hopefully is close to the site that you're looking to build, um, and, and you're, you're building upon that. Um, this is obviously a, a good starting point because you, you've got a, a working site, and you're, you're, uh, you'll speed up development time based on it actually working, and you're just changing things. So the benefits of the child theme, so you have all the functionality of, of the parent. Um, you would uh, be able to add styles. You'd be able to add functions and templates. Um, since it is a, a, you're using a parent theme along with your child theme, it can be updated. Uh, and you, you don't have to modify the code of that, that parent theme directly. Simple to build a, a child theme. Uh, again, it comes down to one important file, the style.css file. And what you're, you're looking to do is uh, change a, a value for a uh, template in the comments. Uh, and, and then, of course, you, so you'd create the CSS file, and then you would add any, any functions or, or styles, templates that you'd use in the theme. This is uh, what it would look like. Your, your template uh, um, can be controlled by folder. So this folder would actually point to the parent theme. You may want to use your parent theme's uh, uh, styles. So if you want to use the style sheet, you can enqueue it. Uh, this is how you would do that. Just simply enqueue the style sheet. Um, and then you'd want to do this in your functions.php file. So this can be done for the, the parent style sheet or any other style sheets that you'd use in your theme. Things to know about templates. Parent templates are inherited. So any, any parent template uh, that you have will be used in the child theme unless you override it. So in order to do that, you would create a template in the child theme with the same name. So if, if there's a... a uh, the same name child, then that takes priority over the parent. 
So you can do this for all of the templates in the, the parent theme, or you can do it for some, or, or even very specifically for a single page. You can use the page-slug, so you change the, the template name to page-slug or page-id, and you can get very specific. Um, child functions. Uh, it, interesting, because they, they run, the parent functions will run automatically. So everything in that parent, uh, the parent, um, uh, the parent theme will, uh, will run uh, right away. But child, child functions will, will run before the parent functions. So it's interesting because thinking about them running before, that sounds like they have priority, but it's actually not the case. The parent functions, if there's a naming conflict, uh, would run uh, afterwards, would take priority. Uh, there's a way to override parent functions, and I think that's going to be useful for, for anyone who's using a child theme. Overriding uh, can actually be supported by your parent theme already. So it could be something that, that's already uh, in the, the parent theme as a uh, pluggable function. Pluggable function is essentially just looking to see if that function is already there. And since the, the child functions load before the parent, it's, it's looking to see if those functions exist already, and then running the, the child function. Uh, if not, it runs the parent function. Another way to uh, override the, the parent functions are to use function priority. So WordPress functions default to a priority of 10. Uh, so what we'd want to do is set it so the, the child function has a, a higher priority. So it's, uh, the priority works from, from lowest to highest, so higher runs later. And in this case, we would want to run the child, child function higher than 10. Uh, so we can add the, the child function uh, to run with a priority of 15. So something to think about here is your parent function will actually run first, then your child, child function will run. Um, this, this is interesting to think about because it could cause problems, um, and you, you may actually, you're not removing the parent function, you're, you're just overriding it. There's a way to remove. So you can remove your function completely if you need to with uh, remove action. Um, and, and this is something that it, it, it needs to be called after the parent function actually loads. The way that you would do that is to call it at a later hook. So let's say our, our parent function happens at initialization. We'd want to run it at, uh, at WP loaded or some hook that, that happens later than initialization. So here we're adding an action to WP loaded and removing the parent. So if all this child theme business sounds a little bit uh, too tricky or you just don't want to deal with the file system, you can use a plugin. So you can use one-click child theme or several other plugins like it to create your own child theme just based on, on any parent theme that you'd want to use. All right. The next thing that you might want to look into uh, for starting your, your theme uh, development is a theme framework. Uh, theme frameworks are uh, essentially a, a library, a code library, a code base to work off. They're, they're built by experienced developers, and they uh, include things that you would use commonly to support making many sites. So one of the, thing that's one of the things that's interesting about theme frameworks is that you can use different approaches to build sites out. So some of them are visual, and then some of them are code-based. And a lot of these theme frameworks have themes that are already built, many uh, that you can look at to, to reference or even use and swap out, uh, which will have the same functionality as the theme that you're working on. So the benefits of a theme framework are to maintain these features across uh, many themes. You've got the, the commercial developers building them, so potentially this is, this is going to be something that is well supported, uh, and it's done using WordPress best practices. Um, commonly used, so your developers actually may know uh, how to work with uh, some of the, the uh, 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 frameworks already. Uh, since some of them are commercial, they provide support and updates. Uh, it, it's essentially a, a parent theme. So using a child theme with the theme framework, uh, you can update the parent theme to the latest version. Development is ongoing, so you won't be in a situation where your, your theme developer disappears or the project uh, is, is not maintained. 
Some examples of theme framework are Headway, Genesis, and Themeify. These are our popular frameworks. And uh, Headway is, is notably different because it, it gives you some drag and drop options. Genesis and Themeify are, are very popular. You'll find many themes built on them and around them. OK. So sum things up. If you want to start with a solid foundation, it doesn't matter uh, which approach you take, but it's important to, to have that, that base to work with. And you can get that from starter themes, child themes, and theme frameworks. A theme framework is something that, that you could use almost as a site building factory. So you maintain these features across multiple sites. They're well known, reusable, and supported. Something to think about also is that, so I've recommended these three different approaches. There's nothing to stop you from building your own site. So you can always build your own site from scratch uh, using the, the instructions that we went through in the anatomy of a theme. So all you need is those simple three files, and, and you can start building. And perhaps that's helpful to, to learn by actually adding in the code yourself rather than, than reading through it. Um, and there's, there's no reason why, uh, if you're in a time crunch, or there's a short development timeline, there's no harm in using a, a theme that exists already and, and customizing it, um, and perhaps use that as a, a parent theme um, and create a child theme from it. So that's it. Uh, I'm really excited just to, to be here to talk to you guys. We'll be around uh, after this session at the Happiness Bar, Hall G, foyer. And uh, I guess we can open it up for questions if anyone's got them.